still feel the presence of the Lord from revival. Amen. That's just, that's just locked up in my bones. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you been good? Has God been good? Hallelujah. He's more, he's, he's more than good, isn't he? Hallelujah. There is never a time that we can do anything without the Holy Ghost. Ain't no use us playing with ourselves or playing games. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on in this place, Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. People in here need healing and delivering. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 I, I just, if you just give us 30 minutes, we'll be going home. If you just take away every thought, don't think about what you got to do when you leave here. Don't think about what you're doing tomorrow, what you're doing for the fourth. You may not even make it to the fourth, amen. Amen. Just for right now, just put your mind on God, on His goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Come now, Holy Spirit. Somebody need you right now, Holy Ghost. Somebody need a touch right now. Somebody need a burden lifted right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come now, Holy Ghost. Come and break the yoke of bondage. Come and destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, come, Holy Spirit. Oh, come, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and abide with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We can do nothing without the Holy Ghost. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome to this place right now, Holy Ghost. You are welcome to heal. You are welcome to deliver. You are welcome to set free. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Ghost. Come on, say, come, Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Spirit. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come on, cry out to the Holy Ghost. Come now. Come now. Come now, Holy Ghost. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come on, cry out. Somebody's rest, wrestling with 
lesbians. Somebody is wrestling with it right now. The Lord wants you to know that He knows that you're wrestling with that. God is here to heal you. He's here to deliver you. He don't want the devil to take your mind. He don't want the devil to lie to you any longer. Praise God. All you got to do is say, help me, Lord. If you need help from God, just say, Lord, help me. Come on, don't, 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 don't be shy. Don't be shameful. Say, Lord, here I am. Help me, Lord. I, I need help, Lord. It can be for anything. It can be for everything. Whatever you, whatever you need help, you can just say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I'm sick in my body. Help me, Lord. God, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Help me, Lord. God, I'm in need of things. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. In the place to help you. In the place to deliver you. In the place to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Pastor Corey is coming with the word on this morning. Amen. We dare not bring him up to preach. Amen. Amen. Before the spirit of this place and come in and begin to flow in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Lord, touch. Oh, touch, Holy Ghost. Touch and deliver, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Touch and deliver. Touch and deliver. Touch and deliver. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In this place, we cast all of our cares upon you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you got a prayer language, amen. I'm, I'm telling you, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the Spirit right now. Don't worry about your neighbor. If they're ready to sit down, they can sit down, amen. But if you got a prayer language, amen, begin to pray in the Spirit, amen. Hallelujah, begin to pray, amen, hallelujah. The devil don't know what you're saying, you don't know what you're saying, but God knows it. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Renew us, oh, God, renew us, oh, God. Renew us, God, renew us, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know, the Statue of Liberty for, for Americans is a sign of our freedom. It's a constant reminder of our freedom and our liberties. Amen? I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is ten times above that. Like Pastor said, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. But a lot of times we play double dutch with the Spirit of God. I'm waiting for that opportunity to jump in. I'm waiting to jump in. I'm waiting to jump in. If you just go ahead and jump in, it'll be over. What liberty does, I'm telling you, what liberty does in the presence of God is it makes, it, like, it just makes stuff fall off of you. They had tent, tent meetings back in the day. You go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. They had tent meetings back in the day. And they would pray for growths and stuff on people's faces and growths on people's body like lumps and tumors and stuff. And then because the spirit of the Lord was present, those lumps and, and those tumors would just fall off their bodies. That's the same way that fornication, that struggle with homosexuality, those, that, that anger issue, that adultery, whatever the issue is, in the presence of the Lord, it just falls off. Like taking off a shirt, or taking off a jacket. It's just that easy. What's too hard for God to do? Hallelujah. What's too hard? What's too hard for God to do? Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. Glory. Hallelujah. We truly been revived on this week. Amen. I was talking to Pastor this morning, and this revival this week was for us. This revival this week was for a down of grace. Or you may say, well, I, I wasn't able to make it, or, or I missed this, or I missed that. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't stress yourself out about it. There's another one coming. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Revival is so necessary for a believer, I'm telling y'all. We get in ruts where we just do the same thing over and over again. I, 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 yeah, this is my time to pray. This is my time to read. This is my time to do this. But when you're revived, you're fired, you're, you're reignited yeah. for the things of God. Those old ways we had, those old ways of doing things, they're gone because we have a fresh anointing upon us to do the work of the Lord. The Bible says times of refreshing. How many of y'all like to take showers? Woo. I thought you were cut the grass and nothing like a nice medium shower. Amen. Hallelujah makes me feel refreshed. But in God's presence, the Bible says that there's times of refreshing. You know what sticks on us? You know what's nasty on us? The sin we drag along with us. I'm telling you. This ain't got nothing to do with my I don't even know if we're going to get to it today. But all right. Amen. This is what we do with sin. When all you got to do we got a ministry that, that hops on sin, amen, because we always want to keep our focus on Christ Jesus. Right. But the more our focus is on Christ Jesus, at some point we're going to have to let those things go. Amen. You may say, well, this is me. My daddy struggled with this. I am struggling with this. My mama. It don't matter. If it takes a, a, the faith of a mustard seed to move a whole mountain, what is your issue? What is what you're struggling with? Y'all know how big a mustard seed is? You can barely see it on the tip of your thumb. But God says, with that much faith, you can move a whole mountain. So what can you do with your issue? Hey, we got revived this weekend. We're going to stay revived. How many of you would want... Uh, how many of you would want the uh, the EMTs to come revive you with the, what you call them? The shockers. They shock you and bring you back to life, and then you die again, but they don't shock you no more. You want to be revived again. Amen? 
because revival is what keeps us in a place where we're communing with God. We can hear from God. We can grow in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and we praise you on this morning. We glorify you, Father God. We thank you for what's already taking place. We don't take for granted that somebody could, could have accepted deliverance right from their seats on this morning. We thank you, Father God, that minds are already starting to be renewed. Hearts are already starting to be mended. Birds are already starting to be lifted and are lifted in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, just have free reign in this word in the name of Jesus. Do what you see fit. Do what you want to do. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance for the results of this word. We thank you in advance for these, these mighty men and women of God. Thank you for their lives being changed. Thank you that they'll know today that they are as bold as a lion. They are clothed in Christ Jesus. They are as he is in this world today. They'll know that they're, they're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that he's made all blessings available for them. Hallelujah. They like their, their understanding on this morning, Father God. So they'll know how much you love them. And they'll, they'll know how you see them on this morning. In the name of Jesus. I find every attack of the adversary this morning. They'll try to come and rob this world or try to rob the worship we had on this morning. I bind you, devil, in Jesus' name. And I, I just remind you of the fact that you're under our feet and that you are defeated and that you have no power unless we give it to you. And we're not giving you any. We're not giving any room to you, devil. Hallelujah. We're strong in the Lord and the power of your life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all give me 10 minutes and we'll be out. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to rest though, right? We're not going to rest. Psalm 60, I'm talking about today. Thou art my Lord. How many of you say that, 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 that Jesus is my Lord? He's Lord of my life. All right, go on and get him up. I ain't, I ain't see everybody hands up. He's saying Jesus is the Lord of your life. All right, go on put them down. I'm telling you today, there's a responsibility that goes with Jesus being the Lord of our lives. Amen. I'm not coming to condemn this morning. I'm coming to encourage. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank God. So, verse 1 says, preserve me. What does that word preserve mean? That means to keep you in the current state that you're in. That's right. Amen. So when we're revived on this morning, we want God to preserve us. That's right. Keep me right here in this state of being revived. Yeah. Keep me right here. You may have got revived this morning yeah. during worship when pastor was talking. Amen. Yeah. We want God to keep us and preserve us right in that state. Right. I'm telling you because nothing else matters. That's right. I want somebody to raise their hand and tell me what's, a, what's more important than their walk with God. Amen. But, but is it always a priority? It should be, right? Amen. I know sometimes we get sidetracked, but we got to get back on track. Amen. Because this is the most important thing and the most important relationship that we'll ever have in life. Coming to church is not a relationship. If I just, my, my beautiful wife right here. Well, who's dating? That's right. Keep her hand. The Lord is too shy on me. Amen. But, and when we were dating, if I would have just went to her house, not said a word to her, just sat on the couch, and then two hours later I just left. I'm just coming. I'm just attending her house. I'm, I'm coming to her apartment. But we're never establishing a relationship. Amen. So I, I can't just come to church and expect that to be my relationship with God. If I'm not doing anything at home, if I'm not doing anything outside of these walls, then it's not relationship. And I, and I might not even be saved. Amen? They said that there's it, some people that have some signs that's going to make it to Jesus. They can say, depart from me. I never knew you. Not trying to scare you. I'm just, I'm just giving you the word. Amen? But says, preserve me, O oh God, for in thee do I put my trust. The next one. It's in God only do we put our trust. We don't put our trust in finances. We don't put our we don't even put our trust in a church. We put our church our trust in God. Amen. Because churches 
are filled with people that are imperfect. So they have the capability of letting us down. Amen? Verse 2 says, Oh my soul. This means with everything in me. With all that I have. Oh my soul. I'm not just saying this out of my mouth. I'm not just doing this any old kind of way. Oh my soul. Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. Yeah. And somebody, now, I'm going to say this, and I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm going to say it anyways, okay? It's, if you're not going to live the, for what it takes to be somebody that, that calls the Lord their Lord, don't say it. Right. Don't say he's your Lord, but then your actions don't line up with you, with him being your Lord. The Bible says he's a king of kings. Yeah. Well, if you ain't acting like a king, you're not a king. That's right. If you're not acting like the Lord, it's not the Lord. That's right. We have to line up with what we're saying. Right. I got convicted this week, okay? This, the revival has just really done some things, you know. I can't say that the Lord is my Lord if I'm not the best husband possible. All right. All right. I can't say the Lord is my Lord if I'm not the best son or daughter possible. I don't care how my parents act. What that got to do with me being who I am, which is the son of Christ? Well, my parents did this, they did that. that honor your father and your mother. That your days may be long. Amen? But I'm saying there's a responsibility that comes with saying that you are my Lord. There's a great responsibility. If we're going out in public and we're not displaying Christ, he ain't my Lord. I'm getting mad at the waitress at the restaurant because she got the order wrong two times. I'm not displaying what it means to be a Lord. I can't say he's my Lord if I'm acting like that. Yeah, we have moments of weakness. What I'm saying is, we're revived. Our focus has to be Christ Jesus. And if our focus is Christ Jesus, everywhere we go, he'll be on our mind so our actions will follow what we're thinking. We've got to think about what we're thinking about. I'm going to tell you what you're thinking about. Why does drive the ticket so long? Why does waitress can't get her act right? Why is such and such acting up at work? If you say it out of your mouth, it's on your mind. Think about what you're thinking about. If I'm thinking about Jesus, I'm thinking about what he's done for me, I'm going to have greater compassion on somebody else. Amen. It doesn't matter if they cuss me out or do this or do that to me. That ain't nothing compared to what Jesus did or what he went through or what he experienced. At any moment, Jesus could have said, I quit, I'm going back to heaven. They're going to have to fend for themselves. And we would have never been saved. But he chose to take it. He chose to receive it. Spit on, beat, bruised. The Bible can't even give it justice as to how bad Jesus was tortured in The passion don't do it no justice. Y'all seen the passion of Christ? And that's graphic. That don't do it no justice. That's what Jesus did for y'all. We, this is a universal symbol right here, right? We wear these on our neck. What this is saying to me is that my arms are always open for you. My arms are always open for you. Yeah, you messed up last night. Yeah, you did this yesterday. My arms ain't coming down. They open for you all, at all times, always. That's how a Lord is. That's what a Lord does. And he is expecting us to do the same thing. If he's the Lord, they say he's the Lord of Lords, if we're lowercase lords, then we should be acting like the big Lord. You done me wrong? Bring it in front of your face. You did this to me? Bring it in. I don't care. I don't care. I'm the Lord. Thou art my Lord. Amen? It says, my goodness extendeth not to thee. Jesus doesn't need our goodness. He doesn't need anything we can offer. He wants our worship. He wants our obedience. He wants our love. Amen? But he doesn't need it. Next verse, did you already go? Okay. But to the saints. So my goodness is extended to the saints. My goodness is extended to others. Amen? Just like my Lord extends it to me. Hallelujah. And to the excellent in whom is all my delight. The next one. I got about 10 more minutes. Their sorrows, so we're talking about people that are serving other gods. Yeah. So we, when we think about people serving other gods, we think it's got to be that dude that's wearing all black, big clothes, earrings everywhere, all over his face, got a 666 tattoo. No. 
We can be, we gotta be careful because we can worship things ourselves. Anything we put before God, we worship in that more than Him. If it's more important than God, we worship it. If I care more about money than I do about my relationship with Jesus, then I'm worshiping money. Because everything in my life is gonna line up with getting money. Amen? But if we worship Jesus first, we won't worry about money because money won't be there. Because he surprised all my needs before he gets in glory. Think about what we're thinking about. But those people who, who, who uh, worship other gods, their sorrows shall be multiplied. Because they hasten after this stuff. I'm quick to run after something because of money. Instead of saying, Holy Ghost, yeah, I need. But it's just the right thing for me to do. That's talking about the Holy Ghost earlier. We can do nothing without him. I was listening to a song the other day on the way to Dream Barbershop, matter of fact. I mean, I was just crying like a baby. The song's called How Deeply I Need You. Y'all heard the voice of oh, Chicago Glory. But I was just thinking about doing the little, I can run to the grocery store. But God is protecting me on my way to that grocery store. I don't care if it's one minute away. God is watching. Up. How many of your houses have been broken into this week? We take it for granted. But God has protected your home so that it has to be How deeply we need him. At any moment, something can go wrong. Our church could have been shot up. But God has protected us. God has watched over this ministry. Amen. I'm just saying we cannot take these little things for granted. He's our Lord. We're saying he's our Lord. We've got to trust him in the little things. We've got to trust him in the big things. We've got to acknowledge the little things and acknowledge the big things. Amen. We just want to acknowledge. We can't just acknowledge y'all oh, because you got me a new job. God, you make sure my body ain't sick. Amen. I could be in the hospital right now. Hey, man, and the devil wants me to be there, but it ain't going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Their drink offerings are of blood. Will I not offer? Nor take up their names unto my lips. I'm not, what they were saying here, I'm not even going to entertain them to the point of saying those other gods or talking about those other gods. Because they're irrelevant, irrelevant when it comes to my God. Yeah. Amen? Because he is our Lord. It says, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Oh, my Lord. So, this is my cup. All right. I, I just emptied this cup. But unlike God, I can't fill this back, this back up. It's just done. Amen. I can take another bottle and do it myself. But with Jesus, when my cup empties, he automatically fills it right back up. He said, well, I, I, you may say, well, I, I feel empty. I feel this and I feel that. Well, you already know how we feel about emotions. But they're not important when it comes to spiritual things. That's Amen. Right. Right. But if we open ourselves to receive the filling of God, we'll be filled. That's right. God has made everything available through Jesus. Right? right. We think we have to work to get it. Yeah. We think we have to work to get this and work to get that. If we had to work to do it, Jesus would be coming back every time. Right. He would have to come back here every time you need God to do something. Jesus will come back and die again. Come back and die again. Come. You ain't got to beg God. That's right. You don't have to plead with God. Uh -huh. We don't have to pray hard. Uh -huh. We ask and we shall receive. That's right. That's Nowhere right. in that scripture does it say you got to beg him for anything. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it's so awesome that he wants to do it for you. Yeah. He wants to do whatever you need him to do. We can never forget that he wants to do it. That should help us believe it right there. Like, I got this going on. You know what? Jesus wants me to be free in this area. He wants me to have this. Amen. Amen. That's less than something crazy, okay? But when the Holy Spirit's leading us, we're going to ask for the things of God. Amen. Amen. He's my portion, and a uh, portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. What verse is this? All right. So because he's my portion, it doesn't matter my condition while I'm on this earth, because he's always taking care of me. Amen? He says, I'm in a relationship with him, and my cup is never empty. So, how does God maintain our lot? He says, he maintains our lot by carrying out what we've spoken from his word. 
Now, uh, God has free will. Free will is great, huh? Free will is important for us, right? So that means we have the decision to accept Jesus or reject Jesus. And we've chosen to accept him. Amen? Amen. So for that same reason that we have free will, God's not just going to give without us doing what his word says do. So how can he maintain my lot if I'm not asking him to do anything? If I'm not seeking him on this? I'm not talking to him about this? You want your family member saved? It's not just going to happen by osmosis. Somebody got to say something. You want something in your life? Somebody got to say something. It don't just, oh, look at this raining cars and houses today. It's raining healing. Amen. It does rain healing here in the Amen. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. So, you know, back in the horse and carriage days, even now, if you wanted to ride on a horse and carriage, the, the carriage has a, a, what do you call the person that, uh, that holds the reins? Okay, y'all got it. We, we know what it is. Okay, that person's holding these reins. Picture yourself as the horse and the Holy Spirit as the person holding the reins. Amen? So he's guiding us where he wants us to go. But we can't snatch the reins away from the Holy Ghost and try to do it on our own. Amen? If a horse is just running loose down the city, down the street, going downtown, it'll be crazy. That's how we are when we try to do things on our own apart from the Holy Ghost. Let him take the reins. Let him guide us. Let him lead us. Amen? Since I have set the Lord, I have set the Lord always before me. I got a mission I got to go on. And I said, Holy Spirit, I just need you to lead and guide me. Right. And then he started moving. Because he moving, I'm moving. All right. But I, the Lord is always before me. I'm not taking the lead. I'm not the pilot. I'm not even the co-pilot. I'm sitting in first class. With my feet kicked up. Amen. Eating some fancy peanuts. Amen. But the Lord is taking lead. And where he leads me, I will what? I will follow. Amen. Amen. And it says, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Amen. David was having a prophecy too about, uh, about Jesus and what was to come down the road. Amen. But it says, I shall not be moved. Let me tell you what being moved looked like. Well, hello. Yes, it's Mr. Brooks. Y'all gonna cut my lights out tomorrow. Uh, how much do I owe? Five hundred dollars. Well, I only have a hundred. Well, Mr. Wilkins, if you don't bring the money, your lights are off. Click. Now I'm moved. Right here, right here is faith. When I can say, you know what? God supplies all my need according to the mission of the Lord. But over here is me being moved. Like, you know what? Hey, bro, I need to borrow about two. About two. Sis, about three. Amen. But I'm telling you, nobody can lend you as much as God can lend you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can't be, if we're standing in faith, usually when you're standing in faith, there are things that come that you let them shout in the spirit. There are things that come that, that, that may try to move us from that place of faith. I guarantee it. When you make up in your mind to believe God, things are going to happen. It's, I'm not speaking anything negative. I'm saying usually they get worse before they get better. They always put the hardest, on the obstacle course, they put the hardest one near the end. Because you're already tired, you're already wore out from, from, from the struggle, and they put the biggest one at the end. But when you get over it, you won. I got a victory. Amen? So don't be moved because something comes to try to shake your faith. Your faith is unshakable. You can't be moved. You can't lose because God always calls you to try. Amen? Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. Let's go to uh, Joshua 1. So that, that story, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Pastor talked about from Wales, England. Evan Roberts. Man, I'm telling you, Right now, we gotta be. We have to have spiritual courage. Yeah. So this man 
had to preach at a revival, and Pastor, when Pastor tell the story, he sat down for an hour when it was his time to come up and preach and didn't say a word. Just thousands of people watching. But he was determined not to move unless the Holy Spirit moved on. A whole hour. You know, we would have got up and left. Oh, this man crazy. Yeah. This boy, Lord, Lord, don't get that. Don't get the person that's Amen? Amen? But when you believe the Holy Ghost, that's right. that's good. you have courage. But you got to have courage to say, you know what? No matter what the Holy Spirit tells me, I'm not going to move from it. Right. If he tells me I need to sit here, not say a word, well, I'm going to sit here and not say a word. That's right. and, see, and then he got up and said a, a couple words, and then it was over. But I guarantee you, so many people would change that night. Because it was led by the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, you say, I don't know how to listen to the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you how I started. So, I mean, I first got here, I didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. I was in the ministry, they didn't really teach you. They might have taught the Holy Ghost. I might not have had it ear to ear. I don't, I don't really remember uh, a claim about that ministry. I'm saying that, I said, when I got here, I'm just going to start trying. Well, I would get in my secret place. My time with God, and I would just ask the Holy Spirit something. Whatever I heard, I moved. And then as over time, I started to recognize his voice. In the beginning, I may not have recognized it right away. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will speak if you ask him to say something. Yeah. If you ask him something, he will speak. Yeah. He ain't going to yell. Uh -huh. It's just going to be that small, still voice. And it's always going to line up with the Word of God. And so anytime I would ask the Holy Spirit something in my beginning stages, I'm like, well, if it, let me see. Well, that lines up with the word. I'm just going to follow. And so I develop a relationship. And I don't care if I look crazy trying to do this. At some point, it just clicked. And I'm like, I know the voice of the Holy Ghost. Because I didn't give up. I, I mean, I missed it sometimes. Who cares? I thought the Lord was telling me to say this, and I was supposed to say that. It don't matter. Right. I'm going to move if I think it's the Holy Ghost. Right. But, I, but when I get to the point where I mature, in it, I'm going to know it's the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. 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 Don't be discouraged. We all got to start somewhere. Right. But you can start today with that relationship with the Holy Ghost. Right. So with that relationship with the Holy Ghost, we can be courageous. So this is what uh, the Spirit of the Lord told Joshua. Only be thou strong. So only means this is the only thing you're going to do. All right. Only be thou strong and very courageous. I'm telling you, man, to be courageous, everybody ain't called to be courageous. But the children of God are all courageous. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody can't be a firefighter or a police officer. Everybody can't be a special forces in the military. But every child of God can be courageous. Amen? He said, well, shoot. Let somebody else take care of it. I don't know what's going on there. I'm, I'm nervous about this. Just be nervous while you're moving over there to it. Amen. Well, I don't want to ask this person they need prayer. When you see this person is definitely in need of prayer, just move on it. Be courageous about it. Amen. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which most of my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God wants us to prosper in everything we do. So being courageous as we're led by the Holy Spirit will make us prosper in everything we do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When he says don't turn to the left or the right, sometimes we try to give ourselves an out. Right. Oh, well, you know what? If I don't go over there, I think such and such will do that. All right. I don't want to go and say something and it'd be the wrong thing. Yeah. I don't want to go over. They might get mad. Yeah. Well, we'll deal with that after the fact. That's right. We make other decisions before we think. We might as well make a decision with the Holy Spirit leading. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. So you are you're a believer, okay? I said you're a believer. Amen. And he is your Lord. So because he's our Lord, our lives gotta change. I'm telling you, man. Because there's nothing more important than your relationship with God, everything else has to be put on the back burner. Amen. Amen. Nothing else is as important. 
We say, well, I'm going to go home. But you might be thinking now, I want to go home and eat today. Well, don't worry about food right now. Amen. Jesus said, my food is due to work of the Lord. That's right. That's my food. That's right. Amen. We, can't, we just can't have any, any more time where we're just like, going backwards. Oh, then I'll get back on when I come back to church. It don't work that way. Church ain't, ain't, ain't your relationship. Church is where you go to get refreshed. Yeah. Where you go to fellowship with other believers. Amen. Amen. That's where we come to start a fire. Amen. Amen. Smith Wilkinsworth said that uh, if, if the Holy Spirit is not moving, then I'm about to move him. Right. <laughs> but sometimes we say, well, if I don't feel it, I'm not going to get up and worship like as hard as I could. Come on now. Well, if the Holy Spirit ain't moving, well, let me get up and do something that'll make it move. That's right. I've been withholding my high step for a long time. <laughs> Amen. But at some point, you just can't contain any longer because the fire of the Holy Ghost yeah. is going to release something on the inside of you that you can't hold back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how stupid I look. When the Holy Spirit is burning, even when he ain't burning, get out there. Uh -huh. Worship him freely. Amen. Amen. Like I said, uh, worship sometimes is double dutch. Because we're trying to find that moment where I can get in. Before you know it, it'll stop swinging the ropes. Amen? So as a child of God, this is what uh, David was saying. All nations are compassed, about, compassed me about. But in the name of the Lord, will I destroy you? The next one. They compass me about. Yeah. They compass me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compass me about. Like bees. Bees swarm, don't they? They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They is teaching us a valuable lesson here. Sometimes you gotta encourage yourself. You might have been scared. David might have been scared. But after he finished speaking this to himself, I'm sure he was courageous. Oh, yeah. There's things coming up against you. You live in this world, but you're not of this world. So the world's going to come at you because the devil is the prince of the air. Yeah. So things are going to come. It's going to feel like swarm of bees coming at you. Sometimes it feels overwhelming. Sometimes it feels like I can't go any further. I don't want to go to church today. I'm too overwhelmed. I'm too burnt down. I don't want to leave the house on a Saturday. Don't let the devil dictate how we act. Because you can destroy them. It don't matter how many it is. This ain't a physical fight. This ain't four people coming to your house to jump you. This is ants coming to fight a giant. And you the giant. Amen? So it don't matter how many of them it is. He's under your feet. He's under your feet. All right, give the Lord a hand praise. Today is the best day to never go back again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go back to not being a good husband no more. Because he's my Lord. That's right. I'm not going to go back to being a bad father. Because he's my Lord. I'm not going to go being a bad person in ministry. Because he's my Lord. Everything I do. Boom. Is unto the Lord. And if he's my focus when I'm doing it, I'm going to get through it. And I'm going to do it without losing heart, without losing strength, Amen. without getting weary. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> we can't go back. We revived. Amen. I would never like to finish without giving people an opportunity to commit to something. So I'm open also to everybody that says, today I'm going to commit to never going back. Yeah. He is my Lord, and now my actions are going to follow that. I, I might not even pray for you. I don't know what's going to happen when you get up here. But we're making a commitment today. The first step is just stepping out of your seat, shaming the devil, and coming up here. Nobody's watching you or paying attention to you. Amen? We in here to get our own. 
Hallelujah. So just come from where you are. We're committing today. He's my Lord. He is my Lord. I just don't make stuff up. I wish I could. It would be a lot easier. But when the Holy Spirit wants to help you, we've got to take advantage of those opportunities. He can help you from where you're at. But just let's, let's shame the devil a little bit and come all the way up here. of their call. They will live a life worthy of a son or an heir to the throne of God. They will live a life that exemplifies your love, exemplifies your compassion, a life that draws others to you. Hallelujah. They made a commitment today that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ will always shine through them, that blindness will be removed from others. Hallelujah. Today is their day of new beginnings. Hallelujah. Today is their day of new blessings. New grace upon grace upon grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that they'll always be reminded of this very moment where they made this commitment to you, where they chose to never go back again. And I'm making the same commitment with them on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that if we ask anything in your name, so we're asking you to strengthen us on this morning. Give us strength, because without your strength, we'll fail. So be strong in us, Father, God, in the power of your might, that we can stay the course. We can stay focused. In the name of Jesus, help us, Father God. We won't take for granted that we can do anything on our own, Father. But we give to you everything that's a hindrance to us furthering in this walk with you. We know that it's just a, a stitch that's on us that a, a refreshing can fix. That time of refreshing in your presence. But we first give it to you, Father. We give it to you that you remove it from us and we never be that way again. We'll never return unto that vomit like a dog. We'll always put our hands to the plow and never look back. Because we want to do the work of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Thank you, that prayer will be a priority for these men. God. Praise and worship will be a priority because you are seeking out those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. 
They'll make reading a studying a priority, witnessing a priority, praying for the sick, praying for lost family members, a priority. They're going to do what their big Lord does. Hallelujah. Which is have the heart of compassion towards us. We're going to be long-suffering towards us. Glory! Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And we praise you in advance because we believe that you've already done it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.
fool you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. So if you're saying, uh, this brother over here said something good. I'm about to open the doors for uh, anybody that would like to join this, this family of God and Grace. But this brother on the end over here said, when I walked over to him, he said, I feel the love. Amen. Amen. That's all we can offer you here. Because God is love. Amen. And if you're saying today that you want to make a God and Grace your church home, I'm asking you to come and join this family. Amen. We can promise you a few things. One of them is love, like this brother said. And we can also promise you that we're going to give you the word of God. Amen. Amen. Is there one? Hallelujah. We love to have you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Let's prepare our hearts for the Lord. What an awesome word today. Let's give Pastor Corey a hand. As he was up here preaching, I was just so proud that that's my husband. And he didn't want to show me his outfit. He said, I got something new for you. I said, okay. And when he walked out the door, I said, oh, he looking good. I thank God that's my husband. But I thank God that he's really serious about the things of God. And I'm just so blessed that he's my husband. Amen? Amen. So right now we're going to take communion. The word of God says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who heal all thine, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and healeth all thine diseases. So if you have a little guilt or shame because you haven't done everything the right way, Guess what? When you take this communion, you got to be reminded that the Lord took stripes for your shame. And be reminded that his blood not just covered our sin, but his blood removed our sin. So don't let anybody make you feel bad about where you're at in your walk, about what you've done, because you are forgiven. And it says he heals all thine diseases. Not some, but all. And a benefit of the blood of Jesus is that we can be healed without surgery. No matter how long we've been sick or diseased, God can take it away. It's not the end. Amen? And so I'm glad that it says forget not all his benefits. We have to be reminded of his benefits as children of God. Amen? My sister who was healed from cancer. Amen? Sister B healed from diabetes. People healed from mental problems. Amen? So we just want to say thank you, Lord, for all your benefits. So as we take this, let that be on your mind, that this is your medicine. So we're going to eat of his body, and we're going to drink of his blood. Amen? This is his body that was broken for us who allowed us access in to those benefits. And this is his blood that not covered, but removed our sin. Amen? Let's drink. Amen from the Lord. Amen. So brothers, please meet us over there for just a second after service. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Kim to come dismiss us. And to also give you guys information about the Daughters of the King meeting that's going to take place on July 15th. July 15th at 2 p.m. So that's two hours after the cleanup. So we want y'all to come to the cleanup and we want you to come to the Daughters of the King. Amen. Bless the Lord. July 15th, we're going to have Daughters of the King, 2 p.m. Come out and be blessed. 
bring a friend, come ready to fellowship with your fellow sisters, and stand up so we can be listening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this word that went forth today, Father. We thank you for, that it fell on good ground. We thank you, Father, for the power and authority that you have placed within us, Father, to go, Father, and just continue, Father, to glorify you with our day-to-day -day life, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we bless you and we praise you, Father. Let us go, Father. Let us go in peace, Father. And let us go, Father, with you protecting us, Father, and leading and guiding us, Father. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And one second, I have one thing to add.